Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. I hope everyone's having a great day today, but if not, hopefully we can change that by the end of this video. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing hair brushing slash combing hacks and all of my tips and tricks for brushing and combing the hair. We'll use those interchangeably throughout this video. Same thing for the purpose of this video. All of my tips and tricks for brushing the hair in order to prevent breakage as much as possible. When I think about all the steps in my hair care routine that I do on a daily slash weekly basis, brushing my hair is one of those things that has changed the most drastically and also the most recently compared to what I used to do. I pretty much used to just toss a brush through my hair, not really think twice about it. That has really changed ever since I've really, really dug into research on hair care and understood the importance of being careful while brushing and combing. So if you wanna hear all about why this is incredibly important, things that you can do to minimize breakage and damage, then you have come to the right spot. We're gonna jump right into all of that. Before we do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell, drop a comment below, any sort of comment you would like, anything is much appreciated because all of those things really, really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so much for doing all of those. Instagram and TikTok handles are right here and everything you could possibly need from me will be listed in the description box below as always, including Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my merch, discount codes, links, timestamps, and resources that I use to inform this video. All right, that is everything. Let's jump right into this. Okay, before we jump into all of the fun hacks, I feel like it's really important for us to start off by talking about why we should care about the way that we brush our hair because it really, really is so important. So let's just level set with that first. So there's this term called combing ease and that is basically exactly what it sounds like, the ease with which we comb our hair. This is something that directly impacts the level of breakage that we experience because the more force that you need to apply to that comb, which would be the opposite of easily combing through your hair, the more likely you are to experience breakage. So there are a couple different things that commonly happen when we brush our hair and experience breakage. The first is that we can actually have hair fibers that intertwine around one another. So basically having one hair strand wrapped around the other and that can cause a tangle or knot to form. So that kind of bending action mixed with the action of trying to comb through that tangle is what can lead to a break in the hair. This is more likely to cause longer segment breaks or breaks that happen higher up on the hair strand closer to the root. The other thing that can happen is that we can have our hair fibers actually wrap and intertwine around the comb or the brush bristles themselves. That also can cause a tangle or knot and when we're trying to yank through that, the hair can break again. That is more likely to cause shorter segment breaks or breaks that happen towards the ends of the hair. So now that we know that combing ease is very important for preventing breakage, let's talk about the things that decrease the ease with which we comb and actually make combing the hair more difficult. The first thing that makes combing the hair more difficult is something we kind of already addressed, but that is friction. So there are a lot of different things that can increase the friction in our hair. The first being bleach. Getting the hair bleached does increase friction. So if you have bleached hair and you feel like your hair is so much more susceptible to tangles and snarls than your friends who do not have bleached hair, you're not making that up. That is absolutely true. That is just an unfortunate side effect of getting the hair bleached. We struggle in the tangle department. Other things that make the hair more difficult to comb through include fiber curvature. So the more curved or curly the hair fiber, the more difficult it is to comb through. Those of you with curly hair are like, uh-huh we know. Length also impacts combing ease, so longer hair is more difficult to brush through and static charge does as well. So an increased static charge means increased difficulty with combing. All right, I feel like we have all the necessary background now to explain why the way we brush our hair is really important and the different factors that can actually impact that. So now let's jump into all of my brushing hacks. Okay, hack number one is to make sure that your hair is properly conditioned before you even attempt to brush it. I know that I talk about the importance of having well-conditioned hair all the time. There's a lot of different reasons for that, but as it relates to brushing, it's basically to prevent all of the things that we just talked about from working against you. Because if your hair is not properly conditioned, you'll have increased static charge, increased friction, increased likelihood for tangles and snarls, and your hair will just be so much more difficult to work through. You will not have that combing ease you'll likely have breakage. 
eventually. So of course the products that you actually use in the shower on the day that you wash it are very important, but that's not the only thing that impacts how well conditioned your hair is, especially throughout the week. So leave-in conditioners on wash day after you get out of the shower, very, very important. And midweek products to recondition the hair are also equally as important to think about. So the types of products that you use are going to depend on your hair type. We all have different hair types. We can't all kind of take on the same amount of product throughout the week, especially for those of us that are infrequent hair washers. Not everyone can have the same amount of product left on without feeling like they have a lot of buildup on the hair and that it's really weighed down. So I do have a video talking all about how to figure out what your hair type is that I will list below. And in that video, I talk about the hair types that are more susceptible to product buildup and which hair types may be able to kind of tolerate more product throughout the week. So be mindful of that. It's not going to be the same for everybody, but there are so many different kinds of products that you can kind of adjust or pick depending on what your hair can actually take on. So I will just share a couple of my favorite detangling products. The first is the Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil Heat and UV Protective Primer. Amazing spray, regardless of when you use it. You can use it on wet hair before you style. You can use it midweek to recondition. I love this. And for me, it's creamy enough to leave my hair properly conditioned, but not so much so to where it really weighs down my hair or leaves my hair feeling like it has residue on it. I love it. If you're someone that prefers creams and lotions to sprays, then one that I love that's a really lightweight option is the Red Kinesthetic Perfect and concentrate leave-in treatment. This is so, so, so nice and works wonders on my hair for detangling purposes. So this is something that I usually only use when I have wet hair, but I have used this midweek and I like it that way as well. If you're interested in something that's even thicker and creamier than that, then I absolutely love the Alterna Caviar Anti-Aging Replenishing Moisture CC Cream. Such a nice one. Not something that I use midweek because it is a little bit thicker, but it's something that I absolutely love on wash day. It really makes makes my hair look and feel super nice. And don't be afraid of oils for conditioning the hair throughout the week. I absolutely love to utilize oils. Do I use the same amount of oil that I would for a pre-shampoo oil treatment when I sleep in that overnight? Absolutely not. I use a lot of oil then, and that just makes my hair look completely greasy and dirty, but a little bit of oil every other day is something that is just a must for me. So if you want something that is incredibly lightweight, zero residue, the Alterna Caviar Anti-Aging Smooth anti-frizz dry oil mist is incredible. I am obsessed with this. Perfect option for those of you that are afraid of buildup or midweek oils. Oh my gosh. One that I think is amazing if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one styling, texturizing, and oiling product, then the Bumble and Bumble Surf Infusion Oil and Salt Infused Spray is incredible because it's gonna give you those really pretty beachy waves, but it's also going to help to condition the hair. So this is an awesome midweek product for that reason. If you're looking for a budget-friendly hair oil, then I actually posted a video very recently where I share five different drugstore hair oils that are all amazing. So I'll list that video below if you are on the hunt for something affordable, but those are some of my top most favorite products for conditioning and detangling the hair. Okay, I promise the rest of the hacks that I have are quicker than that, but I wanted to make sure I was giving you guys some product recommendations alongside it. So that is hack number one. Make sure your hair is well conditioned all week long. Okay, let's move on to number two. Okay, hack number two is going to be super important if you have any knots in your hair. So if you do have a mat or a knot, do not try to brush through that. Those can almost never be worked through with a brush or a comb. And if you try to do that, it's probably gonna snap right off. I know I'm not the only one who's been there where you have this little rat's nest that just breaks off. Mm -hmm. Some of us have probably dealt with that more than others, but there is no worse feeling when you're like, oh my gosh, there's this little ball of hair. Let's avoid that. So what we can do to prevent that from happening is to try to detangle those snarls with our fingers first. Then you can work through with a brush or a comb after, but I would say try doing this even for snarls that are not as intense of that, of that, as that, because this is just going to help to make sure that your brush is not snagging and tugging on any areas that are a little bit snarled together. But the key here is to make sure that you're being super gentle. So I kind of do like this, like a little zhuzh, you know? lightly work through the hair, be gentle, because if you're tugging down with your fingers, well, that can still cause a break too. That's not gonna, that's not gonna help. That defeats the purpose. So gently finger comb through first, work through any snarls that you can, and then we can go ahead and get to brushing. 
All right, the next hack is to make sure that you are brushing your hair in the correct state, state meaning wet or dry for your hair type. So this is a tip that I have shared before, but I couldn't not include it in this video because it's super important. So if you have curly hair, it is best to brush your hair when it's wet. The reason for this is that wetting the hair actually helps to uncurl your hair fiber to a certain extent, and that improves combing ease. But the opposite is true if you have straight hair. It's actually best to brush your hair when it's dry if possible. I emphasize if possible because I am not somebody that can wait until my hair is dry to brush it because my hair is so fine and susceptible to tangles. If I do that, the snarls that ensue are out of control, but I just make sure to be extra, extra careful when I am brushing when my hair is wet, knowing that my straight hair is more likely to break in that state. Okay, hack number four is to make sure that you're choosing a brush or a comb with teeth that are more widely spaced basically as widely spaced as possible to where you can still work through your hair because I've tried wide tooth combs before that have teeth that are very, very spread apart and then it doesn't really work and I can't brush through my hair properly and detangle it properly. So that's going to just depend on how tangly your hair is, but opt for something that has teeth as far apart as possible. This is not only going to create less tangles overall because you have less bristles for your hair to actually snarl around, but on top of that, it will create less complex tangles. So if your hair does kind of get stuck around the teeth, they're not going to be you know, stuck as intensely as they would be if that comb or brush had very tightly packed bristles. I love this one that I got off of Amazon. It came in a set of two, so of course I will list it below with everything else that I talk about in this video. This is one that does work for me for detangling purposes. I still prefer a brush. I just find it so much easier to get through all of the tangles in my hair, but if I'm using a comb, is this one right here. Okay, the next hack is for those of you that prefer a brush to opt for one that has softer bristles over one that has stiff, firm bristles. The reason why this is important is that soft bristles are going to be able to flex and bend a little bit as you're brushing through your hair, whereas bristles that are really stiff won't do that and they will just yank right through any tangle that you have, breakage. So this is actually a brush that I feel like I saw people talking about on TikTok or Instagram. I can't even remember anymore. It's called an unbrush. They're not the stiffest bristles out there. Like they do have some bend to them, but compared to other brushes that I have that have more bristles, I noticed when I tried using this that I had so much more hair getting yanked out because of the stiffness of these bristles. So I personally just choose to avoid things like that. One that I absolutely love that has all boar bristles is something that I got from Ulta. It doesn't have a brand name on it, but I of course will list it below. I love this. It's so soft and gentle, but at the same time, brushes like this that don't have any plastic bristles in them don't detangle your hair fully usually if you have tangles like me. So I like to compromise and find a brush that can do both, which is where the Wet Brush Pro comes into the picture. You guys know the drill with this. I've talked about it a million and one times. I love this so much, but it's because it has the soft bristles to help to protect the hair and it has plastic or you know a little bit firmer bristles in there so that you can actually work through tangles. But these are so bendy, like some of the bendiest bristles on a brush that I have ever tried. I feel like I have tried 700 brushes at this point. I don't know if 700 brushes really exist, but I have tried so many and none have bend like this, plus the soft bristles in there. And on top of that, because it has a combination of the soft bristles and the plastic ones, the plastic bristles are more widely spaced than they would be if they were all plastic. So I just, I don't think it gets better than this, honestly, this is just it's the best thing ever. And Wet Brush also has a round brush that has both soft bristles and plastic bristles. So this one actually has predominantly softer bristles, but they have the plastic ones thrown in there to help to kind of work through any tangles as you're using it. But again, it's going to be so much gentler than something that's predominantly or all plastic bristles. So that one is great too. All right, I have three hacks left to share. The first is also something that I've shared before, but it's so important I wanted to bring it up again. It's to make sure that you are never shampooing your hair without detangling it first. One of the most important reasons for this is that when you actually are massaging the scalp, that action right there can create tangles. So if you're doing that, creating tangles on top of tangles, 
have fun trying to brush through that. But also there are certain ingredients added to shampoos that increase friction and make it more difficult to comb through the hair because they are designed to strip the hair of those oils. So clarifying shampoos especially are notorious for doing this. What? Notorious at this. Notorious for this, yes. So detangle before you shampoo, thanks. Second to last is to work through your tangles in as small of sections as possible. So this is very, very important for me personally after I've washed my hair, when basically my entire head of hair is a tangle. So what I have started to do on wash days to be extra cautious when I brush is actually section off my hair so it'll be wet and tangly and I will clip it up with one of these little mini jaw clips like that and then I will work through a small section, then let down a little bit more hair. Do we like this hairstyle? And I will do that on my entire head of hair, both with my fingers and then with a brush. So I'll do fingers first, go in with a brush, let hair down, do it again. And that I have noticed so much less hair coming out in the brush whenever I do that. And my final hack is to make sure that you are brushing your hair enough to prevent severe tangles, but not too much because there is such thing as over brushing or over combing the hair. This isn't good either because that leads to physical wear and tear and damage that ultimately can contribute to breakage as well. So we want to find that happy medium where you're brushing enough to make sure that you don't have mats on top of mats. So for me, I have to brush my hair every single day to do that. Otherwise, talk about a rat's nest. But at the same time, I'm not brushing my hair five, six, seven times a day over and over because that's where we can start to run into some issues. So for me, I found what helps is to make sure that I have my hair pulled back. So I'm looking over here because I have scrunchies. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of these satin scrunchies that I got off of Amazon. They come in a pack of three really cute neutral colors. So I'll do a low pony with a satin scrunchie or I'll use a, ho use a, hosiery. Use a hosiery elastic from Scoonchie. I love these. I'll either do a low pony with this or a low loose braid or twist because that then just keeps my hair concealed and pulled away not pulled tightly you guys know I don't like to do that because then that can contribute to breakage too I'm overly cautious I know but then I have my hair pulled away so it's not as likely to tangle because if I just let my hair run free like this all day every day Again, talk about a rat's nest. It just, it can't happen for me. Okay, those are all the tips and tricks that I wanted to share. So we have made it to the end of this video. I really hope that you guys found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that you learned today that you didn't know before that was really surprising to learn. Is there a hack that you are really excited to try out? Are there any products that I talked about that you're gonna pick up after watching this video? Let me know what that is or what those are. And as always, I will have everything listed in my description box below in order of mention so that it's really easy and organized for you guys to find. If you enjoyed this video you guys know the drill please don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend thank you again so much for doing all of those things and supporting me in my channel make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days but until then i hope you have a great few days